Welcome to our lecture online and here's one more example of how to do problems using light refraction and Snell's law and yes also the total internal reflection concept where we have to figure out what the critical angle is. So the problem here has a piece of glass with an index of refraction of 1.6 which is partially submerged in water and the other side is sticking out and is uh, exposed to air. And on the air side, we have a beam of light coming in at a particular angle, not known. We're supposed to figure out what that angle is. So that's the angle of incidence. Goes across the boundary. It's being refracted. So this would be the angle of refraction. The beam then continues to the right side of the prism where it meets the boundary between the glass and water. And so we want total internal reflection. And the question is, for that to happen, what must be the angle over there? And will that be a maximum or a minimum angle. So let's write that down. Max or min. Maximum or minimum angle to make that happen. All right, so in order to do that, we have to work our way backwards. We first have to figure out what the critical angle is, which then will allow us to find the refracted angle, which then will, will allow us to find the incident angle. So let's just first find the incident angle relative to what the critical angle would be right here. So how do we find the critical angle? Again, we use Snell's law. And so let's see what the boundaries are here. So if we call this 1 and 2 across the first boundary, and let's call this 3 and 4 across the second boundary, then we can use the proper indices for Snell's law. So we have n3 sine of theta sub 3 is equal to n4 times the sine of theta sub 4. Now, to find the critical angle, we'll set theta sub 3 equal to the critical angle and theta sub 4 equal to 90 degrees because that's how you find a critical angle. If you make this the proper size, then the refracted angle will be 90 degrees with respect to, with respect to the normal. And at that point, if the angle, the critical angle becomes any larger, the, the light will then be totally internally reflected. So to find that boundary, we set the external angle equal to 90 degrees to find the critical angle right there. All right. So we have n3 times the sine of the critical angle equals n4 times the sine of 90 degrees, which of course the sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1, which means that n3 sine of the critical angle is equal to n4. So solving that for the critical angle, we divide both sides by n3. So the sine of the critical angle is equal to n4 divided by n3. And so the critical angle therefore is the arc sine of the ratio of n4 divided by n3. So in this case, n4 would be water, and the index of refraction of water, and uh, 3 would be the index of refraction of the glass. So the critical angle is equal to the arc sine of n4, which is 1.33, and 3, which was 1.6. So what will that angle be? So 1.33 divided by 1.6 equals take the arc sine of that and we get 56.2 degrees. So the critical angle is equal to 56.2 degrees. So if we take that angle, we can now figure out what this angle right here is. This is theta sub 2. That would be the refracted angle across the first boundary because now we have a triangle right here. And let me use a different color. So we know that the critical angle is 56.2 degrees, 56.2 degrees. We know that this is a 90 degree angle right there. So we then theta sub 2, theta sub 2 is equal to the angles of a triangle always add up to 180 degrees. So that would be 180 degrees minus the 90 degrees of the right angle minus the 56.2 degrees of the critical angle. So therefore the refracted angle must be 90 minus 56.2, which is equal to 33.8 degrees. That's correct. All right, so now we figured out what theta sub 2 is. From that, we can figure out what theta sub 1 is, again, using Snell's law. So here we have n1 sine of theta 1 equals n2 sine of theta sub 2. We're looking for theta sub 1. So sine of theta sub 1 is equal to n2 sine of theta sub 2 divided by n sub 1. And so taking the arc sine, theta sub 1 equals to the arc sine of n2 sine of theta 2 divided by n1. And so when we plug in the values, n2 would be on this side of the boundary, which is the index of fraction of glass, 1.6 
times the sine of theta sub 2, and we found theta sub 2 to be 33.8 degrees, all divided by n sub 1, which is the index of refraction of air, which is 1. All right, so what is that angle equal to? So we have 33.8, take the sine of that, times 1.6, and then take the arc sine of that, and we get 62.9 degrees. So theta sub 1 is equal to 62.9 degrees. Now the question is, that's the incident angle. Is that the maximum angle you can have, or is that the minimum angle you can have? So let's try to figure that out. So I have a little ruler here. And so let's say, what would happen if I make this angle larger? If I make this angle larger, that would make this angle larger as well. So what would happen is that the second ruler, all right, so if we make this angle larger, we make the refracted angle larger, which means we will have a smaller critical angle. A smaller critical angle would mean that the beam is more likely to go across the boundary. So if we make this larger, we're less likely to have the light uh, be internally reflected. So larger thetas of one, no internal reflection, so that means we, any smaller angle will, will make it internally reflect, but any larger angle will not. So that means that this is the maximum angle we can have. So that makes that a maximum angle. So 62.9 degrees or smaller will allow this beam to be internally reflected. You make the angle larger than 62.9 degrees, the beam will go across the boundary and not be internally reflected inside the glass. That's how we do that.